Numbers, the fourth chapter, verse 21 through 789. Last night's class was uh, phenomenal. Uh, Steve did a great job uh, bringing up the points uh, that he brought up. Great discussion after, and God willing, it'll be the, the same today. I, as we normally do, I'll do sort of an overview, and then we'll open up for some discussion. Uh, this Parsha is uh, 176 verses. It's actually the longest Parsha in the whole Torah. And the Midrashic commentaries, uh, particularly, uh, are, are so exceptionally lengthy on this, which is, is fitting that this Parsha is really read uh, on Shabbos uh, after the, the festival of Shuvot. Regarding the given the Torah, it's the idea is with a new uh, reinstated vigor and love for Torah that we dive into this text to look at some very interesting uh, observations that take place. So we have to remember, and we've said this over and over, but I'll note it again, that as in previous commentaries, the sequence of this Parsha and the sections of the Torah uh, are always are not always chronological. So I want to establish a little bit of uh, chronological perception or, or what time that this happened in. It's very detailed in the last Parsha when this takes place. Uh, and of course, Parsha Snasto uh, is, is a prime case of it being completely out of sync if you're accepting it to be in, in some particular order. The opener of this Parsha obviously deals with the census of the Levitical families as a direct continuation of the previous Parsha, uh, Ben Midbar. And the closing section uh, of which starts the narrative of the Levitical census and the command to uh, Moses to conduct the census of the people and the given on the first day of the second month. And this is the specific, um, what I call the specific time frame that we see this given on the first day of the second month of the year after the Exodus. And I think um, uh, Ross pointed that out when we first started this section. Uh, the chronological jump is not obvious immediately. However, the section after the Levitical census deals with commentaries that are related to the newly inaugurated uh, sanctuary. Now, now, sending the ritual impurity out of camp was a very important thing. So today we're going to sort of focus on a couple of items we haven't focused on yet, and that is the sacrifice of Sota, the, the wife suspected of infidelity. And we mentioned it already, and we won't belabor it more, but the, the, the Nazarite vow. And the interesting thing that the two of these are, are posted together um, seemingly on purpose, and that is the sota, uh, the person who is suspected of infidelity and the idea that drinking wine or drinking too much wine could also cause you to violate your, your marital vows by becoming uh, sexually impure. And so we're going to be dealing with that. Uh, the priestly blessing, uh, which is given in the courtyard outside of the sanctuary, is instituted by Aaron on the day of 